precipitate coarsening. As you can imagine, if we have so-called fine precipitate, let's say secondary phase coming out from aluminum alloy, the fine precipitate, they initially are dispersed in the so-called matrix or the host phase due to the change in solubility. And if you do it well, if you control optimum so-called driving force, you have the highest uh, so-called nucleation rate and you have very many, many fine precipitate, very closely spaced and, and they give high mechanical property, quite often high harness, high uh, strength. On the other hand, if we are going to use the material at elevated temperature, for example, you find any aluminum alloy, aerospace grade aluminum alloy, that's a upper temperature you can use them. Beyond that, the secondary precipitate would come together quickly very quickly and as a result your material strength quickly drops which means it's not as strong as it used to be or even during processing if you are not careful the fine precipitate that we people got may be lost it's going through so-called coarsening the smaller particles come together to become a few larger particles and because of the few larger particles the dislocation can move for longer distance okay so this is kind of an illustration we have alpha matrix material the matrix phase the beta is our so-called uh, precipitate right precipitate coming out from the matrix phase due to the solubility change and let's say initially they have this so-called the radius r1 specifically let's say average radius which is pretty fine and then because these precipitates are closely spaced together, right? Relatively close, the dislocation cannot move very far, which means the material will appear to be stronger. On the other hand, if we are not careful, if we use the material above certain critical temperature, or if we process the material and then we forgot to turn off the furnace or whatever take out from the furnace then what happens is people observed over time the fine precipitate what the numbers become smaller and smaller the density become lower and lower at the same time each individual particle or precipitate become much larger much larger the average radius let's say r2 Okay, still it's the two phase, right? It's between alpha and beta, alpha and beta, except now the precipitate, the secondary phase are distributed differently. Make sense? The individual particles are getting larger. People call this coarsening. And in this case, the dislocation you see can move very long distance within the single alpha phase without being what? So God pack the down or inhibited or run into a so-called secondary phase. If the dislocation can move long, long distance, the material would appear harder or softer. Quite often softer, they would appear to be weaker, which means the, at the same low stress, the dislocation can move long distance, the material would plastically deform, the material appear to be weaker. That's what you are going to experience for so-called aerospace grade aluminum if you just annul them above two, 300 degrees C. That aeroplane aluminum, even though it's strong in the beginning, it will behave similarly to your food wrap aluminum. Very, very soft. You can scratch it easily. You can bend it easily back and forth. Make sense? Which is quite often, do you want this? You don't want this, but you have to know this, it happens. Okay, that put a quite often a limit for your processing temperature, for your not only processing temperature, but also for your application temperature. Nobody use aluminum for higher temperature application, strong aluminum, because at high certain temperature, not to mention the melting, become very, very soft. About 400 aluminum become very, very soft. It doesn't sustain much mechanical load at all. Okay even though it's not melted driving force is the reduction of read total interfacial energy makes sense here was this one let's say i put them in radius one to two ratio 
and the number one to eight ratio, do you see roughly the total volume would be the same? Makes sense, right? One eight, one to two radius ratio to the cube, that's one eighth, right? Eight of eight, so the total would be the same, but the total interfacial area, which one would be larger? Definitely the smaller the particle, the larger the interfacial, total interfacial area. Okay, so in this process, you see that's not really a chemical driving force, not really a strong chemical driving force. It's still beta to beta. Make sense? Alpha, alpha, beta to beta, not a big change in chemical composition. And similarly, the total so called elastic or volume string energy kind of remain constant. Make sense? From all these individual precipitate, to one big, large precipitate, the total volume become what? Change or hold constant? Same material, the total volume should remain the same, right? Whether it's eight smaller particles or one big, large particle with a radius of double. Make sense? The total volume is the same. So the total elastic straining energy doesn't change. Fundamentally changes is just the reduction in total interfacial energy. Okay. Then, if we start to consider, okay, interfacial energy, how exactly does this process happen? This so-called precipitate coarsening process, how exactly does it happen? It involves a change in local concentration due to the particle size. Local concentration in matrix due to particle size. Here I'm plotting, I'm again plotting, Gibbs free energy versus composition. Okay, I have one big curve for the Gibbs free energy curve of my alpha, the matrix phase. Okay, which means the composition, the Gibbs free energy will change along this curve if the matrix composition change along this curve. Make sense? And then I have another blue curve for the G beta for which phase? Precipitate. Phase. But I put infinity here means, okay, assuming the local radius curvature A is infinity, which means it's flat. Make sense? Infinity means the local radius curvature is almost infinity, it's almost like a flat. This gives that curve, kind of like a bulk phase alpha touch beta, bulk phase connection. Okay, and then what you learn in thermodynamics is quite often under so-called equilibrium condition, the common tangent. Is this line your common tangent, right? Common tangent between what? Between the alpha matrix, large, and the almost the infinite radius curvature precipitate phase. This determines your common tangent, and then the, this common tangent line gives us so-called chemical potential, right? Under what condition? Equilibrium condition on the okay, really stable condition. Okay. One of the tangent line gives us the so-called X EQ means what? The composition of which phase? Alpha phase under equilibrium condition with beta phase, right? With this one. And then Smaller particle, what people and the people say nanomaterial and things like that, smaller particle tends to have higher chemical potential and also higher concentration. Smaller particle, we said, okay, this is for the case when beta precipitate has radius curvature of infinity, flat surface. But in reality, Quite often, they are much, much smaller than the radius curve, much, much smaller than read than infinity. We would have something like this. Because of the smaller radius, because of the added interfacial energy, the net total per mole of Gibbs free energy for which phase? Beta phase at the radius of what? Hypothetically, let's say R2, this bigger one, is something like this. It's higher than when the particle has radius curvature of infinite. Make sense? The smaller particle has higher molar energy compared with when it's bulk, really, really bulk. Make sense? It's just a, a re, another way to say the higher, the, the smaller particle has some associated individual energy associated with it. Make sense?
So it goes up. And then remember, okay, let's say it's under kind of quote unquote matters equilibrium, semi equilibrium. How would you draw the common tangent? It's still between the alpha matrix, but now with instead of this infinity, now it's between this so called R2, right? Radius of R2. We are going to draw another so called common tangent line. And the common tangent, this tangent point, gives us what we would call x2. What does that mean? It's kind of the equilibrium, quote unquote, equilibrium concentration of what? The solute atom in which phase? X2 is the solute atom concentration in which phase? Alpha phase, right? Because as a tangent line, the structure locally has this alpha structure, X2. And do you see in this case, X2 is actually a little bit higher, just based on the illustration. It's a little bit richer than your complete equilibrium with infinitely large particles. Make sense? And then, of course, this is R2. What if we go to R1, which is even larger or smaller? R1, in terms of radius, it's even smaller, which means from energy point of view, it's even higher, right? So you see that, okay, we are going to, going from R2 to radius become a little bit smaller, which means per mole of that precipitate, actually the energy would be a little bit even higher, raise up. Make sense? And in this case, how do we construct the so-called common tangent? Similarly, draw something like this, right? Draw something like this. Of course, for simplicity, we assume, for simplicity, we just assume from this R1, R2 equilibrium, the concentration or composition of the beta phase doesn't really change much. Make sense? We kind of make that uh, implicit assumption. It doesn't change much. So then we draw this common tangent line. What does this point tell us? That tells us the so-called equilibrium concentration of solute atom within which phase alpha matrix, but uh, around the R1 radius of beta precipitate. Make sense? And this X1 would be even richer than X2. Make sense? Do you see that? And you will see, okay, the local concentration of this X1 is higher than when it's larger. As a natural tendency, if I have something that is bigger, the solute atom would go from high concentration to low concentration. Or put another way, they try to reduce their chemical potential. They try to reduce their chemical potential of the beta B element. As a result, the smaller particle come together to become one big particle. Okay, the solute atom read diffuse diffuse what from near the smaller particle to near the bigger particle, all they will come together and uh, enable the smaller particle to co coalesce or coarse into larger precipitate over time. That's just uh, fundamentally how roughly we uh, understand this process, okay, which we call coarsening. And quite often, especially for metals, if we want stronger metal, this is not what you want. This is something you want to avoid. You want to limit your either usage temperature or your processing temperature. Make sense? Let's say you get a nice piece of high strength aluminum alloy. Then you say, let me locally weld something or let me do something heat treatment of this aluminum. Quite often you lose that mechanical property. Make sense? Okay, causing in kinetics. Kinetics is about rate, how fast. Okay, we don't go into the detail, but quite often people find it's a cube rule. The radius to the power of three bar for average, okay, minus R zero, that is 
initial, okay, the cube of these difference is linearly quite often proportional to T for time, not temperature, capital T is for temperature, for time. K is our quite often people call it the rate constant. And uh, earlier we didn't cover that, but earlier we said quite often these types of rate constant is proportional to D for diffusion coefficient, gamma for interfacial energy, X E for so-called equilibrium concentration. So essentially what it says is the growth rate, the rate constant would increase if the or the coarsening rate would increase with increasing what? D for diffusion coefficient. Make sense? If I have high diffusion coefficient, the stuff would cause them faster. Of course, right? Second, if I have large interfacial energy, my, it would cause them faster. Make sense? Because that's the whole driving force, right? The reduction of the interfacial energy is your driving force. The larger your driving force, you quite often you want to go fast or slow fast. Make sense? And then the equilibrium concentration, the higher the equilibrium concentration, quite often, it causes faster. Okay? And then from here, if we do first the derivative, from here we do first the derivative, the radius, first derivative with respect to time, that's essentially how fast the velocity motion the velocity of that interface move motion is proportional to k over radius average to the power of 2. Or if we put the rate constant from here, d gamma xe. Make sense? So it's essentially what we say is the coarsening rate, the linear particle size growth rate would be proportional to these together. What does this mean? It grows faster with high diffusion rate, with high interfacial energy, with high solubility, but as the particle gets larger and larger, as the average particle gets larger and larger, the coarsening rate becomes slower. Make sense? Right? When it's large enough, that's not much driving force for it to become even larger. That's a big driving force for the individual precipitate to go from 2 nanometer to 1 micron, but that's not much driving force to go it from, let's say, 50 micron to 100 micron. You see what I mean? Okay. So, coarsening of microstructure is typically, as we mentioned, desirable or undesirable? Quite often undesirable, because quite often people want stronger, harder, tougher material. You don't want um, to be coarsening. And to reduce the coarsening rate, to reduce the coarsening rate, what can you do based on this equation? Well, clearly you want to decrease interfacial energy gamma term, right? You want to make the two phases that are more or less compatible. That's one. The other one is you try to def decrease the diffusion coefficient all quite often just by limiting the temperature. Make sense? That's the most effective way if for a given system. You cannot really change the diffusion coefficient, but you can change the temperature. You can limit your so-called usage temperature. Okay? And then decrease the equilibrium solubility. That's a little bit tricky to do. Okay?